about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We live in a risk averse world full of an obsession for guarantees. This is the victory. The Spirit of God is speaking to someone. There are steps you should take in this season. Marking time and giving flimsy excuses will not produce the results. Hallelujah. The ability of God. The ability of God. The ability of God. That you believe God is able. Please find a way of believing. What is school fees? I'm not a stupid person talking to you. Believe me. I understand from a human standpoint, things can be challenging. Things can push your faith. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Listen. Tell you a little story. Years ago, I was going to go and preach somewhere. I prayed, fasted, and it was time to go and preach, and rain was falling. And I knew that I didn't want to disappoint those people. The only way was to just make up my mind and go through that rain. I said, Lord, you have shown me in visions that I will be speaking to kings and nations and nobles. It does not look like it now, but you have the power. What is a car? I love you more than all these things and I prayed in the spirit and I opened the door I went out through the rain while the rain was falling on me I was declaring with joy as I left in the name of Jesus one day nations will celebrate his grace even while today you are now clapping but it took faith it took faith God is inspiring someone it took faith God is saying, I'm calling you into ministry and all you are doing is printing cards and giving people and saying, you invite me and see, you will never do ministry that way. It, life will be hard if you follow it that way and you will suffer and be angry at those succeeding. Take a step of faith. Two hours, three hours every day. Lock yourself in a room. You are building capacity. It is faith. You are taking an action based on what God has said. The ability of God. I'm, I'm, listen, I want to do something to your mind now before we pray. You have to trust God. God is able. The Bible says, now unto him, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him, who is the him? God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think far above all that we ask or think if God says I will lift you this city has enough blessings for your lifting if God says I will prosper you if he says I will anoint you believe him if I stop here and we pray that's fine but listen to me. If all you do is just hope, one day go better. 
is a very sociologically comforting statement but is demonic and destructive Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law it says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do not, not just to say to do not some all that I command you this day then and only then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good success God has integrity but he also has ability Behold, I give you authority over snakes, scorpions. Do you not know that there are all kinds of demonic arsenals scheduled to see that your life never rises to the place of prophecy? Please don't downplay what I just said. The average African family is not aware of the onslaughts of darkness orchestrated by hell to see that you never become what God has destined. It takes power to subdue darkness. It takes power to do what your grandfather tried doing and died in the process. What your own father tried to do and did not do. Now you come up in the name of the Lord. I'm a faithful member of Victory Life Bible Church and in the name of Jesus I'm rising. It takes power. Power. Ah, Lord God, thou has made the heavens and the earth and that by thy great power. I have, I have indoctrinated myself. I have brought myself to a point where I have been, I, I don't know what to call it. I've done, the Holy Ghost has done something to me. The reality of the power of God is a reality that will never fade out of my mind again. There is nothing I cannot believe God for. Believe me when I say this. The only resistance in my life is the voice of God and process. That's it. That's the only thing that has the power to limit me in life. The voice of God and process. Many things that you have allowed to subdue you. It's time in this conference to get angry and say, Lord, I apologize, I've limited you. There are families here that have to hold their hands and say, Lord, we repent. I don't know what suddenly happened to us that in one day, God gave men cities. In one day, God, look, the Bible says that David stood before Goliath. Goliath said, am I a dog? I will kill you, but respect me. I'm a warrior. Israel, is this your best? David said, you don't know who is talking to you. You come to me with your bows. As big as you are, you are still holding bow and arrow. I come to you with a sling. And in the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm imparting faith. Because this night, the things you have been afraid of, you are going to bring them again and say, who are you, that mountain? Who are you, that building project? I've been giving excuses every year. This is the year I must complete it. This is not some carnal thing. Please listen to me. We are spiritual people. Listen, you know, if you are given to mediocrity, this message will not bless you very much because mediocrity thrives on the absence of messages like this to keep giving excuses. A message like this will shake you to the core and leave you with a decision either to stand up and take bold steps or retreat and sit back there. There is nobody who has a guarantee for anything in this life. Men take bold, radical, and sometimes risky steps of faith. Apostle, I want to start a business, but I'm afraid. Who knows what will happen? Of course, something is going to happen. What if people don't come and patronize me? And so we don't move forward. We don't make progress. Apostle, this ministry, God is putting in my heart to organize a crusade or to organize a conference, but I'm afraid. I don't want to embarrass myself. Let me tell you something. If you take the shame, you have been taking the glory too. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. He can't be taking the glory 
and leave the shame for me. Uh -uh. We are one. We are together. If you take the glory in my life, see, this is how to put pressure on God's integrity. You stand before a sick body. Let me tell you this. If you will ever raise the dead, your first assignment is to stand before one. You are never going to truly raise the dead by proxy. One day, you will have to summon the courage to look at someone with all these things in the nose and say, today. You know how many mortuaries have been locked in? Me. To pray for the dead. When you hear some of the things God is doing, it did not start today. Sir, they've taken me inside mortuary and they closed me so that the people, the administration, the administrators will not quarrel the people. And they left me there. I said, which dead body am I praying for now? Because there are so many dead bodies there. I came and stood before the dead body. I laid my hands. It was like stone. I didn't know what parts to lay my hands on. Let me tell you one of the ways that God builds faith. He brings you face to face with what you fear. Listen to what I'm telling you. You may not like this message, but keep it. You will need it one day. It is not every prayer to drive it away that makes it go. There are times that he keeps you face to face with your fear. You will so fear to the point that you will suddenly realize that it didn't have the kind of power you thought it had. Listen, the first day I stood before someone on a wheelchair, it was not in a crusade ground, it was in a house full of responsible people. They gave me drink, they took care of me, they greeted me with the kind of honor that you will even be angry because you know that if that miracle does not happen, you must justify the honor you received. I stood there all of the scriptures that I know ah, would the ground open and let me enter I prayed for that person prayed for that person he was not even feeling anything in the leg you know there's how they can say okay I'm feeling life absolutely nothing was happening after 10-15 minutes I said that's alright no problem but you would think I left the way I came no the more you die to yourself, to your fears, the more the spirit of faith can really work in you. Back to that mortuary story. After I prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing happened. And you know they had closed the door. I prayed. I just used the opportunity to really meditate and say, look how brief this life is. These are all dead bodies that were alive. Because nothing was happening. So today when you hear stories, whether it is of raising the dead or raising people from wheelchairs, it did not happen overnight. Let me tell you the truth. No matter how much a man of faith you are, you will still go through the school of faith. It will be full of a lot of disappointments. But fail as you make progress. Move as you make progress. One day you will gain such power and dexterity. Remember the apostles and their embarrassment. Jesus went up the Mount of Transfiguration. They decided to, to use the opportunity quickly to show that they were his disciples. They came on an epileptic patient. He could not be healed. You, you know the disappointment? They met Jesus and said, no, no, come on. You couldn't have done this for us. But the time came when the shadow of Peter. There is mastery in the spirit. Listen, the one who laughs and does not do anything is the one who will remain in shame forever. The one who cries while moving is the one who soon honor and glory will rest upon his head. Please hear what I'm telling you. Know the difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. God called you to be a prophet. 
you call someone thinking he was a man let's say i'm a lady ah that's number one you are already out of it that level of prophetic error requires you to go for a retreat oh i'm seeing five people in your family i'm the only child of my father and you are standing there feeling stupid yet genuinely the call of a prophet is on you don't worry about the error you made the mistake be proud of it see your scar that is a symbol of shame will become your symbol of honor tomorrow when you get to heaven you don't need to ask who among you is jesus just find who has the scar that is jesus the 24 elders do not have it just find the person who has a scar by his side what you are ashamed of today will become the basis of your honor tomorrow when it has to do with faith, pragmatically speaking, let me be honest with you. In the name of honesty, you may not get results overnight in one day. There is something about the development of the human spirit and its response to the word of God. You just keep moving. As far as God spoke it, you will make mistakes. Don't worry. The school of faith is powerful. It will give you everything you lost while learning. Are you blessed? I'll find somewhere to stop here so that we can pray. God's ability. In the morning, please don't miss the morning session. I will share with you the dynamics of Bible faith. Tonight, I just showed you the two attributes of God that your faith must be predicated upon. His integrity. His ability his integrity i've met people who have ability but they do not have integrity there are others who have integrity and do not have ability this god who has called us this god who has anointed us let me encourage a man of god here who is probably here and saying apostle you don't know what is happening around my ministry no growth no increase no destiny help us no favor there is a god in heaven god is not a traditional ruler God is not a political aspirant. He's the monarch of the universe. When God decides to invest his jealousy upon your life, woe betides any man who stands his way. He has that ability. This is the victory that overcomes. This is the victory that will build. This is the victory that will bring sinners to Jesus Christ. You make up your mind that you're bringing 1,000 souls or 2,000 souls or whatever amount of souls and it looks like how will you reach them no you just believe god for it and you watch the wonder working power of jesus can we pray tonight please rise up on your feet just two prayer points and we're done i like you to passionately cry cry unto the god of the heavens Cry unto the God of the Bible and say, Father, help my own belief. Help my own belief. Something about my not recognizing you are a God of integrity. Something about my not recognizing you are all powerful is limiting me in life and my life is unable to speak the praises of Jesus. But tonight I have heard your word. Lift your voice and pray. Shela kaparaka soto malakati yadaba. Skade balanta sabradi gere balanta. Please pray. Please pray. Shede meke te paraso do shalakata. You call the conference the verdict. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. My own belief. Matalika sobroto soto balako desiata. Hallelujah. Listen. Please, please look at me. 
The Bible says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it says, he walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. It says, whilst we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Why? For the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal means subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. i like you to pray right now and declare. Any condition in your life you know that it does not look like the verdict God has brought over your life from scripture. Open your mouth in one minute and declare. I will not be discouraged. I speak to this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. What I see is temporal. This health situation, you are temporal. Please pray, don't be silent. This financial situation, you are temporal. This marital situation, you are temporal. This ministry situation, you are temporal. this situation with my spiritual life my prayer life you are temporal my word study life oh you must change you must change you must change by the power of faith hallelujah hallelujah Please just lend me two, three minutes and we're done for tonight. Listen to me. If it is Bible faith, it works. Are we together? Do we have ushers here? There are people who are going to start running out by the power of God. There is a grace that is coming on people. Literally, physically, like an anointing is coming on them. Will not take time. Please help them and bring them out. Just a few minutes. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens, please bring them out, and the earth by thy great power. If he made the heavens and the earth, he can make any life. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. A strong anointing, a strong anointing is coming upon them. I know that we'll pray for the sick and the rest tomorrow, but let me just respond as the Holy Ghost is moving me. Hallelujah. Selena has There are families here. Listen to me. There are families that have been under siege for a long time. Nobody rises beyond the level. Right now, fire is coming on those people. Bring them out right now. Father, help them, please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. In the name of Jesus. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Anyone under the anointing close to you, just bring them out. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Just give me five minutes and we're done. We have to give God an opportunity to move by his outstretched arm. Is someone praying? Open your mouth in one minute. Everything that must live your life in this conference, declare by the Spirit. Please bring them out. Declare by the Spirit. shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you will kick down lie you will tear down coming after me there's no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me
the name of Jesus every family here I speak as touching the might and the ability of the creator of the ends of the earth that every power hold her please don't let her run around she will fall I declare by the spirit of God every power that will not let you go this night by the God of heaven I declare it broken right now broken right now broken right now broken right now we're almost done this is what happens in the house of God it's time for people's destinies to move forward hear me whatever has tied your feet so that you will not make progress in the name of Jesus, we set it on fire. 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 Hallelujah. Who is Balogun? Balogun. I'm hearing a name Balogun. Is there someone with that name? Balogun, you are wearing suit. Balogun, is there someone like that? You are wearing suit, no tie. Balogun, who is that? What's your name? I know that time. Please, can you lend me two more minutes, sir? Where are you from? Um, what's your name, sir? Your name is Balogun. Yes. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing where Bishop Oyede Ghost Church is. Where are you correct, from? Correct, correct. That's where I, I am. I'm not correct. That's my father's house. My father's house is opposite Kenaland. What, what is the name? Where, where, where is the office? Opposite Kenaland. Go that, Kenaland. That's what I'm saying. Kenaland. Do I know you? Have I ever seen you? Yes, yes. I'm telling you that I'm looking at you and I'm seeing. Correct, correct. That's where you are. Yes. My brother, your life is about to change in a way that you will marvel yes. and wonder. There is a God that sits in heaven. Please, whatever you would do, please hear me. Do your best to not miss tomorrow morning session. Even if it means you carry your loved ones, if there's no space, sit anywhere. But please make sure you come with your heart open. When God comes, please help that lady so you don't injure her. We're almost done. Are we together now? I'm seeing light just went this direction. There's so, hold on. There's someone who will shout here now. Loud under the anointing. Bring the person out. Just here. Help them, please. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after you. Hallelujah. So, sir, I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm okay. I'm, I didn't even hear you. Let I'm saying that. Are you a pastor? Yes. You are a pastor, yes. but you also do business. Yes. What do you do? I do business into computer. Okay. Store. I want to pray for you. Yes. Sir. Your life is about to change. You will Amen. not forget this conference. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I stretch my hands and I declare. That man lifting your hand, this gentleman, you, stand up. Come and stand here. Your life is about to change. Lift your hands. Take that fire right now. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never, never be the same. There is an anointing that has come upon you. You will pray. You will fast. You will move in dimensions of the spirit. This gentleman, I don't know you all, but a great fire just came upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to respect time, but please, my apologies. Jennifer. Is there anyone called Jennifer? Jennifer. Let me just pray for you, sir. In Jesus' name here at this conference, I stand 
in faith with Apostle Achidume and his wife and we decree and declare over you. Let things turn around right now in a way that will surprise you. In Jesus' name. What's your name, my dear? From where? From? State of origin. Yes. Delta. Delta. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, the plague of witchcraft. Ah, I'm stretching my hands on you and I'm seeing the light touching that other lady, the one at your back. Isn't it a mystery? I'm stretching my hands, but what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit is touching that lady. My dear, look at me. Fire is coming upon your life for you and your family. The month of May is a strange month of lifting for your family. This is what I'm seeing by the spirit. I declare it so, let it be. And for you, my dear, I break the hand of witchcraft and every orchestration. The Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance, it says, that spoke against us, that he nailed it to his cross. We, we enforce this verdict that the cross speaks over your life and your family. And I use this as a point of contact to pray. Everything that should have entered your hand and for whatever reason has been delayed by the works of darkness. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. Some of you between now and tomorrow morning, you will return with very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, um, you are here and I'm seeing at least there's one three years, there's one, um, I'm seeing the number five. That would be five years. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I would have just closed this, but the Lord just ministered this to me. Is, who is that person? Our time is gone. We have to respect time. If you are the one I'm talking about, would you just boldly indicate so that I pray for you quickly? You're married. You're trusting God for the fruit of the womb, and this has happened to you. How many years, my dear? Five years in June. Five years in June. Is your husband here? Yes. Husband, can I pray for you? Is that all right? Please don't be embarrassed. This is a spiritual family. Let me pray for you. Come. Because that's the same way you come and stand here with your children too. You see, listen. When God does these things, it's more than just showing that a man is anointed. This is a revelation of his love. It's a revelation of his power. So beyond the man, our attention must be on Jesus to discern what he is doing. Are we together now? You're trusting God. Listen. Truly speaking, God is all powerful. I know, respectfully speaking, you've consulted physicians. I know that prayers have been offered on you. And I do not demean and downplay anything that has happened to you, but I want you to believe this once. For there is a name that is above every other name. The power of God will come on one of you. When that happens, I will pray for you. This is the instruction God is telling me. One of you standing here, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come on you. name of Jesus, everything that is stopping your fruitfulness I don't care the medical situation, in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus I come with the rod of a higher priesthood I declare womb open now in the name of Jesus Christ for all of you trusting God the children God will give you will be more than just bodies. God will give you nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have believed it and we declare it. I stand in faith again with the man of God and his wife and we declare according to the time of life, return with your miracle. And for all of you who are out here by the anointing, I declare you return back with strange testimonies. And every power that will not let you go, I speak by the Spirit. Right now, judgment comes upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ. For every one of you who has been here connecting, may the spirit of faith rest upon you. Grace to believe God unusually. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, your faith in the Son of God, your faith in the Word of God, will translate to supernatural results. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a big hand of praise.
Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.